Uh, I hope we are audible. We are going to start again with the second Zoom webinar for uh, CMT. And uh, we have Mr. Shah Nawaz Kareem with us today. So he'll be sharing his experiences uh, and some of the tips and techniques required for off-roading. So first of all, welcome, Shah Nawaz. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm sure uh, in, from the first seminar, uh, I gave you a small uh, brief about our company. We are motorcycle tour operators. And uh, we have presence in more than four countries uh, with head offices in Delhi and Beijing. Uh, we have been catering to various super biking clubs, uh, whether be it in India or, uh, you know, like a group of Delhi super bikers or Badge or Soul super bikers and many other various groups. Uh, and in China, we have uh, one of the biggest groups that is MZ Knight super biking club from uh, Beijing and Guangdong. So uh, apart from that, we have been dealing with uh, various dealerships in India and China, like uh, Ducati, BMW, Honda, Triumph, Yamaha. So these are some of the pictures uh, from the, the dealerships and the, from the past uh, tours that we have done. So we have been conducting motorcycle off-road tours uh, in India. And uh, you know they have been doing these Le Ladakh circuits, PT circuits, with off-roading trainings and uh, you know we are going to start that with Shah Nawaz very soon which will be uh, giving on with the presentation. Apart from that in worldwide off-road enduro tours uh, if you can see some of the pictures we have done uh, Indonesia we do it in Vietnam, New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand uh, Shah Nawaz just came back from GS Trophy so he was a marshal over there which is uh, you know a very credible thing to add to your uh, you know experiences. Right Shah Nawaz? Yeah definitely. So apart from that, we have been doing with Europe with adventure park training programs and uh, Russia, China, Central Asia, so on. So now let me hand over the presentation to Mr. Shah Nawaz. And uh, he will start off, uh, you know, first of all, like uh, I have told you that he is the youngest international instructor, uh, certified adventure and duo motorcycle trainer. He has been a trainer with the uh, BMW Motorrad, Ducati and Royal Enfield. Apart from that, he's a founder for Wheels Guru and Alka Gear, which is a very uh, new product line of gear uh, that he has recently launched. So he'll be talking about that as well in the presentation. Apart from that, you must be knowing that he has done national champion circuit training racing in 2018, then previous one make championship and a lot of other championships. So he has a lot of experience regarding, uh, you know, off-road skills. So uh, apart from that, we'll have second guest speaker, which will be Mr. Christoph. He'll be joining us from Andalusia, Spain. He's the founder of Enduro Park Andalusia. Enduro Park are basically adventure parks that what we call over here. So these are like training grounds and uh, he is the founder of that. And the last GS trophy that Shana was, was a marshal in, uh, he was, uh, Mr. Christoph was actually the sportive director of 2020 International GS Trophy in New Zealand. So he has been a BMW certified uh, motorrad on and off-road instructor board. So he'll be joining in uh, as well from Spain. So hand over to you, uh, Shah Nawaz. You can continue with the presentation, please. Sure. So uh, thank you so much, uh, guys, for joining in. Uh, there are there are a few things that I would uh, want to you know put uh, before we start with uh, these slides. The first thing is that uh, whatever we are going to talk is motorcycle agnostic. Okay, so uh, the, the things that we are going to discuss, the, 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 the techniques we are going to talk about is not about uh, the motorcycle, uh, a specific motorcycle, but it is about uh, the techniques that you can build on on various parts of motorcycles as well. So if you can see a few uh, pictures on certain motorcycle, don't feel that it is doable only on those. It is done on any, any motorcycle. Yeah, there are a few uh, benefits on certain motorcycles. Okay, so we'll uh, first start with uh, selecting a motorcycle. Because, uh, you know, a, a lot of people say that I have a motorcycle. Why should I buy a specific motorcycle? Yes, so the first step is uh, when you have a motorcycle, start probably building upon it. So you build upon it by, uh, you know, uh, adding, adding few things or subtracting few things. So adding few things uh, could be, you know, long travel suspension, uh, better tires, better uh, grip uh, in terms of foot peg, better handlebar, etc. But by removing few things also you can uh, get, uh, you can build a better motorcycle. And uh, so that's the first step. Uh, 
why why it happens is that when you start uh, building upon this you tend to understand that the motorcycle also you know has its own limitation in terms of power capacity or its uh, you know uh, movements so then you move into various other kinds of uh, motorcycle middleweight versus heavyweight motorcycles and all these category motorcycles have their own uh, pros and cons okay uh, if in case you have any questions regarding uh, each segment that i am talking about please feel free to uh, put in the comment section uh, we will take breaks to you know uh, answer those uh, questions as well and uh, the, the third thing uh, is very important which is about uh, uh, financials you know people say that uh, you know uh, this motorcycle is very expensive i i i can't buy it's not about uh, you know a, a being a motor uh, expensive motorcycle or a cheaper motorcycle it's what you need from that motorcycle so start probably thinking from that perspective and building your motorcycle accordingly okay and uh, this is the, the the most important thing that people ask me does height matter okay and uh, uh, height matter in terms of your riding in terms of uh, the skills but well i would say that if you know the right technique you can you can ride any motorcycle i have seen various uh, rally racers uh, various enduro uh, travelers globe trotters having uh, you know uh, have, uh, riding big motorcycles 200 300 kg motorcycles and with all the luggage and everything becoming like a 400 uh, you know uh, kg motorcycle and they are just 5 feet 5 feet 1 or 2 so height is uh, you know just here as a deterrent you know i i could be tiptoeing in one motorcycle okay but you need to know how to work on that so we'll talk about that next slide okay so when you when you when you uh, buy a motorcycle or work on the motorcycle th these are the three uh, segments that you work on first is the bike setup and in the bike setup uh, i i have two categories one is the protection the other one is enhancement and then the second is rider setup so uh, what what do you do in the bike setup you add skid plate you add crash bars engine covers uh, you also add uh, off road uh, you know folding mirrors you add uh, hand guards you add radiator guards so these are those protection parts that you uh, add you also can add various other uh, you know small parts like uh, these are motorcycle specific parts that i would say like for the gs you add few engine guard protections you add the the shaft uh, protection as well as you add uh, various other front cowl protection well this is very very important uh, the the bike safety setup but i would also say that uh, what really gives you the most comfort is the rider setup how you as a rider are set up on the motorcycle so you need to fine tune that handlebar position handlebar should not be very you know upright or it should not be very laid back it should be at a comfortable position so that you can sit as well as stand on the motorcycle too uh, then you move to the brake lever position you know when people say that they put their handlebar up the handle uh, the brake lever and the clutch lever they go down a lot so at that point of time i would say adjust it accordingly so that you have a very good i would say compromise between uh, uh, a standing position and a seated position so with this then you move into a uh, seat position a lot of guys have been asking uh, you know i am i am i am slightly uh, shorter in terms of height and can i lower the seat but when i say that when i ride the motorcycle i ride in the highest suspension setting and highest seat setting i might be tiptoeing but what it does is that it gives me a very good overview of the surrounding area okay and even when i'm sitting i get a much easier position to stand up because when i have a lower sitting position it's it's actually a much lower squat position that i'm going on to okay so which is why i prefer a higher seating position a higher uh, suspension position as well okay so this is my setup but once you start practicing i'm sure this this position uh, you will also start loving it the next thing is foot peg position and when i'm saying foot peg position that means uh, you know people install foot pegs which are either pivot foot pegs 
or uh, you know enduro foot pegs the most important thing is to have a wider contact foot peg okay what it does is that it gives you a lot of stability on the motorcycle and when when you when you put your foot down when you start pushing the motorcycle and steering the motorcycle from the uh, foot pegs automatically you get the feel of it in this it is also important to set up the brake position and the gear lever gear lever position because uh, a, a lot of time it becomes difficult for you to shift the gear or reach the rear brake lever so you need to set it slightly up so a, a best the best setting is to have the foot peg and the lever almost parallel or the brake lever or the gear lever slightly up than the foot peg okay what it does is that it gives you that much leverage when you are sitting as well as standing okay what i do as a hack is slightly tilt the levers up so that uh, i can i can get more benefit out of it okay uh, there is one question uh, is a quick shifter more useful during off roading uh, i would say yes as well as no as a rider i would want to learn more things and i will talk about this quick shifter thing in the next segment next please okay tire selection and tube tubeless conversion i would say the cheapest the cheapest uh, uh, setup that you can do on your uh, motorcycle irrespective of anything is uh, working on the tire pressure and the tire selection okay uh, that tire selection is not the cheapest the the tire pressure is the uh, cheapest but it starts with the tire uh, you know selection because that's where the whole concept of getting more grip starts so uh, there are two kinds of uh, you know uh, setup one is an enduro setup which is a tubeless spoke uh, uh, and a tube wise spoke the other one is a cast alloy setup so you can move into various but on on both these setup you can have uh, enduro tires and uh, even with uh, the spoke uh, uh, motorcycles you can have a tubeless setup through outex tubeless even moose uh, and all of these are used by various guys uh, who are doing enduro uh, riding or even cross country uh, rallies even uh, cross country uh, enduro traveling so these are very important things to understand that uh, how to enhance your riding uh, capability uh, the next slide. yes so the tire pressure what i would say is that when i know that i am going to uh, travel uh, you know like uh, 50 50% on road and off road can i can i go uh, what, what is the tire pressure that i can go down i would say that uh, on regular road plus uh, enduro riding i generally go down maximum 5 psi lower than the standard tire pressure but if i know it is a very very demanding terrain if it could be off road it could be i know that i am going to ride uh, like more than 50% off road then i go down 10 psi so if your motorcycle is set up for 32 psi uh, you can go down to uh, 22 or so uh, don't go beyond uh, 20 psi because that's when it start hurting the rims the if, if you have alloys uh, the alloys as well so that's very important uh, one question basic off road bike versus featured uh, bike yes this is relevant to the previous uh, question the uh, the the basic uh, off road bike when i say off road there are different categories okay uh, and off road bike is a motorcycle which can go into various off road terrain and a fully featured bike which means which has various settings like adjustable suspension like uh, you know uh, uh, cornering abs abs traction control that's that's uh, both very important as a rider when i have uh, learned few skills i would actually want to go lower on these features okay these features are very very good like take for example the 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 enduro rally version on the uh, the africa twin the the uh, the 
Enduro Pro version on the uh, GS, both are superb because they are so much more forgiving. Automatically what happens is that when you start riding more, you feel that I can push more, I can do more. And that's when you tend to, uh, you know, turn off certain, suspect, uh, certain uh, aspects of the, uh, you know, these uh, features. And that's when the motorcycle actually goes very close to the basic off-road uh, motorcycle. Uh, there are a few more questions about Karu 3 tire pressure. Never go beyond, uh, never go less than uh, uh, 20, 22 PSI. I have gone up to 15 on sand. So that's fine. These motorcycle tires can withstand a lot of uh, these things. Uh, a very important thing which is uh, determined by uh, the, the kind of terrain. Because the, the essence of the tire is to have more contact patch. If, if your tire is inflated, the contact patch is less. If your tire is slightly deflated, it keeps on increasing the uh, contact patch. But what also the, the, the issue becomes is that there is a chance for the rims to A, get bent or the, uh, the rim lock could uh, you know uh, push the tire one uh, inside from a when you are turning the motorcycle it could go inside and actually the the tire can go off from the rim so you need to be careful if you know that you are going into sandy slush and that kind of terrain only then only go into uh, lower tire pressure rocky areas you never know what kind of uh, terrain it is so please don't go too low on the tire uh, pressure and when i'm saying tire pressure uh, which means lower than the factory settings. So if the, the motorcycle comes with like 32 PSI, and that's where I'm recommending 5 to 10 PSI. Is there any scenario when we need to increase tire pressure? Yes, when you are back on the road. Yes, when you are back on the road, you want more uh, agility. Okay, so moving on with this. Uh, one more question, which can, which can take more abuse, spokes or alloys? Uh, definitely spokes. Uh, uh, there, there are now various alloys which have, uh, you know, uh, bending uh, with uh, aluminum inserts, which are there on the red area. So they are also very, very durable. So please, uh, yes, uh, Jill Joseph, there is uh, riding modes, which we will talk about later. Okay, next slide. Riding gear. Okay, this is one thing which I have, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, uh, adherence to. Uh, and this is because uh, I have personally uh, been into various kinds of situations where uh, either, either because of the things I was saved or because of not these things uh, I was, uh, you know, not... Uh, happy with the situation. So please, it is important for you to start wearing proper riding gear and I'll just show you these important things which is, you know, adventure riding jacket, body armor. Uh, so if everything is dependent on the kind of terrain or kind of riding that you're going to do, if it is long duration, long riding, uh, definitely a riding jacket works. Uh, body armor is good for, uh, you know, uh, very contact, very uh, immediate, uh, riding position but it also what it also does is uh, that uh, the, the, uh, the the jersey becomes very wet and then you start uh, you know dissipating a lot of heat outside but then it it seldom protects you from the bruises from the not from the impact but from the uh, slides so I would always recommend uh, adventure riding jacket. If you have a body armor, wear that body armor inside and uh, a jacket uh, on top. That is also fine. Enduro off-road helmets. Uh, I would I prefer a helmet with uh, a front visor because uh, when you're riding in insects, bugs, which could start uh, coming inside your helmet, they get stuck over here. That's uh, in case. You have opened it and still you, you can get a lot of uh, air in, uh, intake and uh, keep your eyes uh, up. Enduro boots. And when I'm talking about enduro boots, I'm not talking about adventure boots. These are enduro boots, which I'm talking about. Uh, these have very, um, you know, stiff sole and uh, front, you know, steel toe. 
why that rigid stiff, sto uh, stiff sole is required because when you are standing and riding there's a lot of weight that is going on the foot peg see the contact patch on the foot peg is like this and your foot is actually hitting it like this if your sole is soft it will get bent okay and what will happen it will start hurting your arch of the foot okay and that would be very painful if you're doing a you know five day or six day kind of riding so always prefer a, a boot which has a rigid sole so that there is much much uh, standing ability and riding because you never know what kind of uh, situations you are uh, riding in then uh, gloves with knuckle guard uh, knuckle protection elbows pads chest protector in case of jersey uh, trousers uh, riding pants and knee braces uh, this is this is from my experience that i'm talking about uh, i have seen uh, uh, my uh, i have seen i've had uh, injuries uh, with uh, on my knees and uh, that really hurt and because uh, i was wearing a, uh, i was having a knee brace but i was not wearing it so and regular knee guards what they do is that they help you with the impact protection but they don't help you with the rotational or extension of uh, the the knee so uh, i would if you are doing uh, you know slightly uh, spirited riding do invest in knee braces and then moto skis to protect your uh, you know core okay let me before we move into the next uh, section um can you mention some goggles that can be used with uh, specs uh, i have used uh, you know both are and i wear specs so i have won uh, both and they work fine for me that was for suvo uh, expedition engineer difference between level 1 2 uh, 3 jacket okay let me clarify this also uh, the knee jackets uh, sorry uh, the the levels are uh, in india specifically there there are only very uh, one or two companies which provide level 1 or 2 protection on the jacket it's only the the armors which are protected by uh, which have the ce certification of level 1 what does level 1 mean level 1 means if you have uh, had an accident or a slide the impact at a certain speed which is 60 km per hour it will help you mitigate a, uh, an impact only at 60 km per hour okay level 2 means it is 8, 80 km per hour and when it comes to jacket in terms of the material that is being used it is the slide of how many seconds it can go into a 60 km per hour or an 80 km per hour speed so example uh, if i'm wearing a jacket and i have had a slide and the motorcycle uh, sorry the uh, and uh, i'm sliding with the jacket and it has gone uh, for 8 seconds without touching your skin that means it has passed level uh, 1 if it has gone 10 seconds without touching your skin that means it has passed level 2 so basically all these levels help you understand the kind of jacket uh, is capable of there is nothing such as level 3 majority of the brands who talk about level 3 are talking that they are much better than the level 1 or level 2 not just the armors but also from the material perspective i will talk about this uh, specifically when i talk about ulka gear uh, later uh, the next question why are enduro off road helmets better than regular full face helmet so uh, that's a very uh, tricky question because uh, th this has been a debate for long the the best thing that you can uh, you know talk about over here is that uh, the enduro helmets uh, have uh, two functionalities one they have a wider eyelid okay so you can look wider when you stand and ride you can look at a much uh, you know bigger place the second important thing it has uh, a front beak so in case you uh, there's someone who has been throttle hungry in front of you you can just put your uh, head down so that that uh, you know front beak can you know just dissipate some of the dirt yes it won't much but uh, the next uh, usage of this is uh, for the sun so in case there is uh, you know 
sunset or sunrise and you're riding from there, you can actually look into the horizon and ride with this. Okay. Uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, when you have an uh, enduro off-road helmet, it, when you open it up, it gives a ton of air inside your uh, helmet. Any inputs on knee brace brands? Uh, there are I I I I prefer uh, like these three brands. One is CTI, the other one is Ortema, and uh, the third one is Liat. I pers I have personally invested in Liat ones, Liat ones, and uh, they 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 are fabulous. Uh, I have figured out a specific way for me to use it over the riding pants. And when I wear uh, the motocross pants, then there's a separate setup that I have created. Uh, it must help in riding while standing up as more aerodynamic. Uh, uh, you're talking about the helmet. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter. Actually, the, the the road helmets are much more aerodynamic because the front peak never uh, you know comes up. I'll, I'll give you an instance. You know, once I was riding uh, in uh, in Thailand, and at that point of time, I was wearing an enduro helmet, and my helmet chin strap was slightly loose. Okay, there was a gush of wind which went over here, which pushed the helmet up. Okay, and then the helmet came right in front of my eyes. Fortunately, I was wearing the goggles, and what it did, it held the the, the helmet in that place. But uh, you know, that's the that's the thing. Okay, so let me move into the next uh, section. Tools to sorry. Tools to carry for enduro riding, and these these two uh, I have I have mentioned these five, but there are a few more things. But this is that uh, something that everyone should carry. Uh, one is uh, motorcycle specific toolkit. You know, when we talk about uh, toolkit, your motorcycle comes with its own toolkit. But uh, is it is it enough? I would say because uh, it doesn't have the bigger rings for uh, changing the tire and all of those things. So uh, for that, I would say everyone should prepare a motorcycle specific toolkit. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, this is something even Preet uh, does in his uh, tours is that he has a toolkit which caters to almost all the motorcycles, uh, you know, that he takes across, you know, it could be a Tiger, it could be a BMW, it could be uh, an Africa twin. So each motorcycle comes with a different kind of setup. Okay, so have your own specific toolkit which covers majority of the nuts and bolts and screws. So that will help you. The second is tow ropes. Tow ropes uh, are, are super nifty, not just for towing, but various other things as well, like, you know, strapping uh, the luggage in case uh, you want to, you know, uh, leave your motorcycle somewhere. So uh, the, there are a lot of use case for tow ropes that uh, are there. Electric and uh, duct tapes. I have personally used duct tapes uh, on various things like covering the front, uh, you know, it, when I was riding in very chilly environment and the front beak was, uh, you know, there was a hole in my front beak of the helmet and uh, it used to you know, send a lot of uh, air inside. So I used the duct tape just to cover it. So uh, the best case is, uh, you know, just keep a roll of it around the uh, the rear view mirrors, okay, inside that and, uh, you know, just use it, tape it and it would be good. Uh, pipes. And uh, this, this is uh, very interesting because I have seen various people getting stranded in various locations and they don't know how to, you know, uh, get fuel or because of low fuel or it could be water. So I would recommend you to carry pipes, uh, you know, like a one meter pipe. Uh, you know, this this thick and this helps in various situations and zip ties zip ties three types uh, multiple zip ties carry it zip ties I have used them as uh, you know number plate hanger because one of the bolts have uh, broken I have used them to you know zip tie my luggage various things so it helps. There are a few more things that you can uh, carry is bungee cords. I'm sure uh, a lot of uh, guys carry that bungee cord. And uh, lastly, uh, lastly, uh, uh, a set of, uh, you know, uh, separate uh, screwdriver. 
Okay, so apart from your uh, specific uh, toolkit, at times uh, a separate screwdriver set uh, works really well. Any important DIY work while touring using tools? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, a, a DIY that any, everyone should know is uh, uh, is uh, you know replacing the tire, changing tire, changing tubes. Okay, and uh, for this you need uh, the the longer uh, spanner for changing the tires. Uh, um, so that is another uh, you know thing that you should keep. Uh, another DIY is uh, if you have an older motorcycle, which is a carb motorcycle, uh, you know, tuning the carb is a very important thing. Understanding fuses, because this is a very important thing. Yes, this is a fuse is another thing that I was about to say uh, is, a, is a must to carry because uh, at times you can get into a situation where you don't know what has happened, but it was just a fuse that would have gone out. So carry few fuses and I think the best setup to see in terms of electrics, if, if it is not working, try fuse, try all the fuse and then check for various other uh, components uh, like cables. Are all ADV bikes same behavior wise? For example, GS that are, um, Okay, so uh, because they are ADV bikes, they they are relatively much uh, have have much better dynamics. Let's say from a cruiser, okay. Uh, but all of these motorcycles have their own way, have their own characteristic. Like uh, for the Africa twin, it's a it's a it's a parallel twin, but has a configuration of a V twin kind of uh, firing order. So what it does is that. When you are giving the throttle, especially on the turns, the rear comes out pretty, pretty fast. Okay, so that's a behavior. Uh, on the GS, the engine is down, low, and wide. So what it does is that it keeps the handlebar and the upper portion of the motorcycle very smooth. The Tiger uh, is a unique motorcycle because it has an inline three cylinder, which gives the power more like uh, a super sport. Okay, so power is not instant, but it is more up the, uh, even for the, the Tiger 1200, right? Uh, the, the power is up the rev range, more like a super sport. So if you are on the road, it, it adds a lot of, uh, you know, grins inside your helmet. Okay, next uh, slide, please. Okay, so we, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the riding technique or the riding position. This is something that I, I emphasize a lot in all my trainings and uh, not just trainings, but uh, wherever we are riding. Um, when, we, when we are, uh, you know, and when I'm talking about the, uh, this, it is about the enduro riding when there is off-road. So the first thing is standing and riding. And uh, all of these, what I will do is that I will go through uh, bottoms up technique. Okay. So when I say bottoms up technique, which means you start with the foot position, your foot peg would be the, uh, the center, the arch of the foot peg. Okay. Would be on the arch of your foot would be on the foot peg. Okay. Uh, uh, later, what when, is your opinion? And sorry. Uh, is no, uh, yeah, everyone is going to be muted. Uh, you can just ask okay. your questions in the chat box itself. Hold on, Shanawas. Uh, uh, at the, you are on unmuted, okay. No, no, perfect, it's, it's okay. Yeah. So I'm saying that uh, the foot peg uh, is at the, uh, the center, but when you are starting and riding faster, you, you would start moving your, uh, your, your toes closer to the foot peg. Okay. But I will talk about that probably later. You start with the same. Your knees would be slightly bent. Okay. Your elbow would be uh, slightly uh, out. Your hips would be slightly bent. Your back would be relaxed. Your shoulders would be relaxed. Your elbows would be out. Okay. Essentially, what you are doing is that you are controlling the motorcycle from the lower part of your body, and not just uh, with uh, the, the, the the handlebar. 
Okay, so when the motorcycle is moving, you are moving the handlebar with the right momentum of uh, the body position. Okay, and your chin up, look ahead. One important thing which everyone misses out in the long run is uh, you know brake pedal, uh, brake lever, and uh, you know the clutch lever. I would recommend that uh, everyone should uh, start using or covering the brake lever and the clutch lever throughout, and it adds a lot, lot value in the long run. Okay, uh, and uh, remember that uh, don't grip the bars, grip the uh, the the motorcycle from uh, the, the knees. Okay, sorry, there is one more question that uh, was asked: uh, How should the weight leaning? Okay, I will talk about this later. Uh, another important thing while standing in uh, riding position is. Uh, you need to understand that how riding works. You actually start with your vision. So you look where you are going, then your body reacts to it. Okay, uh, you, you, you look where you are going, you, you move from your body and then you work on your livers. Okay, so always remember to keep your chin up and look ahead. And when you are riding, please remember that uh, you're, you're riding during uh, you know uh, adventure riding is not dependent on where you are going and where you're looking it's actually from your uh, periphery vision so you need to start scouting for instances and then your body position will come up so when you're uh, riding off-road you are essentially Counter balancing the motorcycle. You are adding weight from top. So the motorcycle is leaning on the inside. You are adding weight on the outside. So it is counterbalanced. And you are constantly finding, you know, grip through that area. Okay. And uh, the, the motorcycle is constantly moving. And uh, this is why you are riding straight. Okay. When you are turning, you, you move your body out and turn. So... Essentially, you are giving a lot of input to the motorcycle by looking at the terrain and then working on with your brake and clutch lever. There is one question which is about during ascent or descent. Uh, so, the, the, let's not think it as ascent or descent. Let's think how the motorcycle would move. If it is an ascent, the motorcycle will go up. So what is happening, the, the, all of the weight is getting transferred to the lower part over here, okay? What, where would you want to put your weight up? Because we are always counterbalancing, okay? Where, uh, when you are going this, uh, down, all the weight is now coming down over here. So where would you want to now put your weight is at the back. So it is very important for you to understand that the whole riding experience of adventure riding is finding the balance of the motorcycle, keeping it in between the center and finding the center of gravity. Okay. We move to the next uh, slide. Okay. So having said that, there are few, uh, these four exercises that, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I would say that this, they, they help you build a lot of uh, your core riding skills. Okay. The first one is uh, enduro steering. So you start steering your motorcycle left and right. Find cones, find stones, find uh, anything which you can know and you can figure your uh, vision on and then start moving your motorcycle left and right. You will start understanding how the motorcycle reacts because majority of the time we are used to seeing or riding the motorcycle in straight. We don't know the extremes of the motorcycle in terms of lean left or right. So we need to find that, uh, that lean angle with enduro steering. Once you have figured out that, then you move into riding slow in straight line okay and why i'm saying the, uh, in straight line because it is very very easy for you to open the throttle and ride fast and you can do that almost every day but you need to understand how you can control your clutch your brake your accelerator to figure out that straight momentum at least interval 
Okay, and when I'm saying that, that means you need to figure out combination of all these things, the brake, the accelerator, and the clutch to make sure that their motorcycle is constantly moving. And when I'm saying brake, accelerator, and clutch, it is not applicable only for Africa Twin because that, uh, the, the, the previous generation Africa Twin, because that in India had the, uh, the, the DCT. And for that, the, the technique is slightly different. Anyone who's, uh, who's an owner of Africa Twin in this uh, session, just ping me, I will talk about that. Okay, uh, while for others, uh, it is important to understand the clutch movement. So the basic thing that you can do is sit on the motorcycle, uh, don't press any you know, brake or uh, accelerator, start releasing the clutch, start moving with the motorcycle, stand up and find a position, for, find a point where you have to go and slowly go, uh, slowly ride towards that. Once you have uh, achieved that through one speed, now engage the brakes and gradually start increasing uh, your, uh, your time spent on the motorcycle. The third exercise that I'll talk about is riding in circle with full steering lock. Okay, and uh, the, the most tricky thing when I say full steering lock, that's when people get uh, intimidated. It is not uh, full steering lock in one time. You, you end up in, you know, locking the handlebar. But the objective is to find the lowest, the, the shortest radius of turning the motorcycle without putting your leg down. Okay, and then once you have mastered this, you will move into figure of eight, which is an extension of first left circles, then right circles. And how do you do this is by uh, working on your vision, where you look, if you, if, if you know that there, you have placed cones, look at that cone, look at the area you have to move, and then start steering the motorcycle. Okay, in this as well, you know, vision, body position, and your controls work. And the same with the figure of eight. So these four exercises are a must that everyone should practice once a week. Okay. And uh, if you're riding once a week, that's that day. Okay. So uh, there are two or three more exercises that I would, uh, are there any questions about uh, some of these exercises you can put over here. There are two more exercises that I will also talk about, which uh, has helped me personally build a lot of uh, confidence. One being uh, static motorcycle balance. So you, you go and you park your motorcycle, uh, take it off the stand, and uh, without moving the motorcycle, try to put both the legs up and find a balance. This has helped me a lot. When you start uh, you know, engaging more, there are various versions of it. One with a handle lock, with the brake lock. The second one is with the engine on when the, the, the rear tire is pushing. So there are various versions. And then the, the last exercise that uh, has helped me is uh, uh, the brake slide. So you go and apply the rear brake. Okay, this has helped in various other situations. Uh, and uh, I'm not saying this drifting or, or the brake slide into a turn, just go straight and apply the rear brake, that's it. And trust me later on, uh, you, can, you, can, you can do a lot more with these exercises. Okay, let me move to the questions. Uh, any video of leaning available? Imran Qureshi has asked. Uh, leaning, in terms of leaning the motorcycle, uh, I, can, I, can, I can share with you a, a separate uh, video probably. Uh, I'll share it uh, with Preet and he can send it to you. Um, yes, leaning the motorcycle. Okay, bro, kindly upload the video for future reference. Okay. All of these videos are, uh, are available on my Instagram handle, which is Shambhas Kareem. Uh, find these things uh, over there. Okay. Uh, another question is by uh, Rishi Agarwal, quick shifter. Okay. So what, what does uh, you want to, what do you want to ask regarding? That's my Instagram handle, Shanavas Kareem. Is Quick Shifter helpful? Okay, so uh, Quick Shifter, yes, definitely it is helpful. But uh, remember, the more you start depending on the technologies, the the longer your learning curve as a rider would become. 
Okay, so yes, quick shifter helps. It helps in high speed when the RPMs are up, and you need to uh, you know downshift or upshift, and it revs match if rev it revs matches those uh, ranges. But I don't know how many times you would be doing that on your motorcycle in terms of adventure riding. That yes, it does help in shifting up, uh, but I would say make sure that you build the capability of finding the best. Uh, you know, technique for yourself, and uh, uh, you know, make sure that you develop this technique rather than uh, you know, uh, relying on the, the technology. Okay, next slide. ABS and traction control. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, you know, question uh, part. How, how do you manage ABS and traction control? Okay, riding in gravel, riding in sad, riding in ruts, riding in snow. So there are there, one thing which I'll talk about is how these, uh, you know, how ABS works and how traction control works. So ABS works typically when the, when the sensor sees that the rear tire is locked and it is, uh, the motorcycle is still moving. So it releases the tire. So that's how ABS works. So if, if you are in a situation, you applied the rear brake or any brake, uh, the front or rear, and if it, if it locks and the vehicle is still in momentum, it will release it to gain more uh, you know, balance. But in adventure riding or off-road riding, you want to carry the sand or dirt along with you. You want to use the full grip of the motorcycle rather than leaving it. Example, uh, there, is, there is a tree ahead and I want to, uh, and I have to apply the brakes and I applied it. Uh, there is a distance which is covered by, sli by sliding the tire and there is a distance which is released by ABS. So I would want more ABS input on the road and I would want less ABS input on off-road. Same with traction control. But traction control is uh, tricky over here because uh, in case you have, so how does traction control work? Is that you give the throttle on your motorcycle, the sensor sees that the front tire and the rear tire are both riding at, uh, uh, are at the same pace or not. Okay, if the rear tire is spinning a lot, it will stop, it will chop the power. Okay, so automatically your rear tire comes back to the same speed at the, as the front tire. What it does is that if you are in an off-road situation, when you want to give the gas and move out or take a turn or fast turn, you would want to uh, have more, uh, no traction. Okay, you would want to keep slipping the tire. So at that point of time, you, uh, you want the traction control to be off or at limited use. In various motorcycles uh, nowadays, this comes in various uh, segments. Like the Enduro Pro mode has, uh, you know, a very delayed uh, traction control in the in the GS. Uh, the the Africa Twin has the G mode, which uh, delays the traction control. Uh, which uh, and in uh, uh, in Tiger as well, the Rally version also has a very delayed traction control. So what it does is that when you are riding in gravel, uh, in gravel, you want to get out of that situation, you give throttle or you apply brakes, you want to, you want to control the terrain rather than the ter terrain controlling you. Okay. Which is why if it, you have an option of turning it on or off, you try with off then you try with ABS and traction control on, you will feel the difference. Okay. The technique for riding in gravel, I will talk about over here. Uh, it, it works on very, very uh, important two things, which is uh, first is vision. And the second uh, is your body position. Okay. So your vision, you have to look where you have to exit. And then your body position has to be slightly back from your seat. You'll stand up and move back. And is the same in riding uh, in sand uh, as well as uh, uh, in any loose uh, situation. But in all of these situations, in gravel, sand, rut, and uh, snow, 
the most important thing is your throttle. If you chop the throttle, you are going to bog down. Okay, so you need to have a consistent positive throttle. That's how I term it: consistent positive throttle. And you can ride anywhere. Okay, so uh, riding in ruts is also a vision exercise. So if if you know that you are about to enter a rut, uh, be determined and uh, you know just enter the rut. If you if you feel that you can come out of the rut, don't do that. Only when you are at a parallel levels. Otherwise, the front tire will go in or out. Can uh, I, there are a few? What if the bike go uh, doesn't have traction control? Uh, if the bike doesn't have traction control, that means you are in a sweet spot. You can blip and come out of any situation. Uh, there is one more question. Do you, how do you determine when to stand or sit? Or is it that instinct driven trait? I would say whenever the, there is less traction, it is loose. The, 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 the surface is loose. Just be, uh, you know, on your toes, not on your bum. Okay. Whenever the, the, the surface is loose, be on your, to be on your foot and uh, automatically everything would be fine. Okay, because when you sit and ride, you're actually moving your whole body. Okay, what it does is that it, uh, it makes the motorcycle unstable. Okay, and it's actually difficult for you to then control the motorcycle. So that's important. Can you talk about, next question is, can you talk about uh, switching between ruts? So, uh, you know, if you know that you have to switch between ruts, you, if, if the rut is like this, like straight, you go cross, you go across, you never go very, you know, close to the rut, uh, like, you know, like almost parallel to it. Either you will go inside or you will be there. Okay. And if you are in a rut and you know that you are about to, uh, you know, fall or uh, press the uh, brake, press the clutch, sit down, start again. Okay. How to stop the bike on off-road when the brake or with the brake or lowering the gears? Okay, so um, uh, definitely your brakes provide you the best stopping power. What I would say that it's a combination. I use engine braking just to go down the gear and then the brakes. And remember, it's actually... If you want to stop the motorcycle, it's actually the front brakes which will stop. Okay. But if you want to steer or, you know, move with the motorcycle, it's actually the rear brakes which will move with the motorcycle. So you need to build that. And in, in my trainings, these are the exercises that I build throughout for you to understand which brake to use. Is it the front or is it the rear? Okay. So... The next question is, uh, what should be throttle response on loose sand or mud? Any situation, if you have loose terrain across, and when I'm saying loose terrain, gravel is loose, sand is loose, soil, uh, uh, snow is loose, everywhere, you need to have consistent positive throttle, which means RPM should be up slightly, but if you need to play, if you need to slow down, you will not apply brakes because that will compress the suspension. It will, uh, you know, uh, change the geometry of the motorcycle. You will only slow down with the clutch. You will only slow down. You will not even jump the throttle. So always, whenever you are riding, the, the throttle would be consistent positive. Okay? It will not be on off on off because when you'll go uh, when you'll you know turn it on there is a lot of weight at the back when you turn it off there's a lot of weight at the front okay so it is important for you to understand that the next question while off-roading with gravel on road would rear brakes be more helpful or front okay so let me give a scenario you riding and uh, you apply the rear brakes what is happening rear brakes sink in do they do they sink in are they are they in the direction of the momentum 
if uh, if they are not that means you see to sway so let's assume this is the direction of the momentum that you are going this is the motorcycle this is the front end this is the rear end this is the front end this is the rear end and at this point of time you apply the rear brake okay if your body position is not right what will happen if your body position if the motorcycle will move on the right okay but if you compress the front suspension first and apply the front as well as the rear the braking would be much 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 stronger and uh, your 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 braking time would be much better and in one of the exercises that i do is that i break these uh, this the braking part into three parts so you switch off abs you apply the rear brake first only okay so there is there is point a and point b you apply the rear brake and then you keep on sliding okay and then in the next i give you uh, then i ask you to apply the front brake with the throttle on and then you move, move and understand where the abs uh, cuts in and then we combine both front and rear okay so that what it shows in all of the training that i have done uh, over the years is that with only the rear brake it's actually uh, double the distance that uh, you you cover so that means with the front and rear brake combination especially the front combination you shorten the braking distance by half okay what will be the behavior of abs and traction control on incline or slope what should be the best practice for this situation okay so when i'm talking about uh, incline or a slope if you know that you have good grip on incline okay what you need is not abs you need uh, no traction control you need the tire to be spinning but before that you need enough momentum to carry you along that incline if you have if you have a motorcycle uh, if you have uh, the terrain which is uh, which you know is has grip that means you can go even with the traction control on because you will get grip if it is loose you would want the tire to keep on running irrespective of uh, the 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 loose section so you actually want the traction control to be off at that point of time okay same is the situation in sand okay so remember this is important and if you are going downhill while abs if if it is a very slow decline you will uh, yeah mito absolutely not abs uh, if if you are going downhill okay and uh, you are asking about abs for that i would say first try with just the engine braking okay it would be much much smoother and if it is a steeper and longer you would want to use the front brake first but if if you use the rear brake the rear tire would want to come forward so if this is the decline and the motorcycle is coming from this way uh, assume this is the rear and this is the front the motorcycle would want to come this way so please remember it's actually the front brake the technique over here is to go back move as back as possible to shift balance and get more traction on the rear okay the next question which bike is good for off road uh, abs or non abs sorry i didn't understand this question probably i'll come back to this if you can explain uh we should move to the next question okay how to prepare for cross country adventure rally okay this is this is one of the questions that uh, is asked by a lot of people uh, you know uh, part, who are participating in rallies who who want to participate in you know uh, events like uh, raid the himalaya uh, events like desert storm uh, events like gs trophy as well right and what i would say that uh, th these are the five principles uh, that you you can Uh, you should cover first is the preparation are you prepared to participate not just in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, you know i am fully gung ho about it and i go and uh, participate so 
first is preparation you need to know that uh, you are preparing for a very demanding task and it is demanding physically it is demanding mentally it is demanding financially so all of this is very very important the second thing is bike readiness your motorcycle should be ready for it in in any kind of you know uh, this terrain uh, you know events like gs trophy is fine where uh, the motorcycle is provided by the manufacturer but uh, there are there are private events which uh, you know places like big rock dirt park they organize they uh, then there is uh, red himalayan didn't happen last year but uh, hopefully it happens uh, in future uh, desert storm uh, dakshin there various other uh, rallies which happen in india the important thing is bike readiness you are not going in for a leisure you are competing over there or uh, even if you are uh, you know going for leisure you want to stay safe if if your bike breaks down uh, breaks down in middle of nowhere you are uh, you know in for trouble so it, it is important for your motorcycle to be ready the third thing is uh, rider readiness you know the fitness this uh, i should not say about fitness uh, if you are not participating in uh, events like this uh, because uh, you know if if you are not fit you are not ready to you know take on the, the pressure of uh, the whole uh, you know events because it drains you out you start very early in the day you don't know how your day is going to be you keep on riding you you are standing for almost 8 to 10 hours in riding okay it is demanding it is physically demanding so you need fitness and the the two best uh, two exercises which i would recommend everyone should uh, sorry not two three exercises uh, which everyone should do if they are preparing for any cross country adventure any one is cycling so it builds up your cardio the second is rowing cable rowing okay uh, the, uh, these uh, a lot of uh, people prepare this for hours and the third exercise that i would say is uh, you know you build up your uh, heartbeat you maintain that and then third is uh, yoga yes it works uh, mental readiness you know you could be physically fit and ready but if you are not mentally you know ready you are not you know ready to take on the challenges it's difficult for you to uh, go into that situation okay and the top events in india that you can participate in right now because of the covid situation all of the events are uh, you know paused but uh, you know as i mentioned uh, uh, red day himalaya dakshin dair desert storm baha india these are some of the top events which uh, happen in india you can try with uh, any of these motorcycle um so um, yeah okay moving to the next question of which bike is okay of course no in decline situation if the corner there is gravel or sand uh suvo sen gupta gravel or sand so uh in a corner and if you have not seen the corner um it's a, it's a tricky situation for me to answer this question right now um because it's a it's a scenario that we need to create probably is it advisable to install an abs kill switch on adv bikes with non switchable abs um the best thing that uh i have done on a non switchable abs uh, motorcycle was to uh, remove remove the fuse of it yeah so you can you can remove the fuse uh, christoph has replied to galaxy and mitruna for uh, good off road abs not good yes yes uh, define preparation more okay and uh, i am 5 foot 7 inch gs850 have problem on inclines and declines how to deal with them okay so uh sulab jain first thing come for the trainings the the second the second thing is uh you know you need to you need to a build the confidence with uh, uh it is not about the motorcycle it forget 5 foot 7 inch forget 850 gs let's come back to problem on inclines and declines how do you deal with them okay so uh inclines there are three basic things that you need to work on your vision your body position and your uh, controls so if you can work on these three important things automatically
exactly there would be no issue regarding uh, your height or uh, you you are concerned about height because you feel that you will apply brakes and you will not be able to reach the ground why do you have to reach the ground if you have going uh, downhill and then exiting it uh, easily the second thing uh, the the decline or, or in incline if you are going uphill why do you have to stop right while there is a way to do all of these things so we talk uh, and we do that in our trainings okay bmw 850 gs versus uh, triumph 900 versus ktm 790 only 500 entire world uh, which quick shifter auto dipper best for indian off road best of what world okay i for forgot everything wait for the himalayan okay every motorcycle is uh, good every motorcycle has its pro and cons and more, most motorcycles are becoming very competitive so uh, you know uh, what works for you is really important for me uh, i i have tried the i haven't tried the triumph 900 uh, till now i have tried the 790 adventure r i have tried the bmw 850 gs uh, and i have tried the previous versions of all of these motorcycles as well and these motorcycles are capable what i would recommend is that you go and try these motorcycles each motorcycle the feel could be very different from uh, how i feel for that motorcycle okay for uh, which is why it is very very individual uh, approach towards motorcycle um, for me 850 gs and the 790 gs which i have tried both are quite capable i felt that the 790 has uh, because of the new fuel tank arrangement it is nice uh but 850 gs has a, a very very nice usability of its power range so that's another advantage so you need to as a rider understand which segment you are uh, getting addressed um then we have a very hard question which is best adv tourer budget oh yeah it's a very 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 uh, hard uh, question uh, difficult to answer it right now uh, like this uh, do you consider expulse 200 capable for adventure yes expulse uh, expulse is uh, uh, quite capable and uh, yes it can do a lot if if you are equipped for that i missed one question my height is short gs 1200 how do i manage uh, in off roading should i reduce the height of the gs okay um, i i i've had uh, opportunity of uh, training a lot of guys who felt that it was difficult for them to ride with their their low height uh in in my trainings so uh, the best thing is to train yourself uh, there are more, uh, the gs has the op option to uh, you know give the lower seat option so you can try that okay uh you are getting into uh, so next question rishi you are getting into uh, you know very tricky thing regarding 1250 and 850 gs uh, personally i love the 1250 gs because it has um, a lot of uh, usability for me which i tried but if you are doing some single track some uh, you know terrains which is based on gravel 850 gs works uh, great i haven't tried the 850 gs on the spiti uh, or on the raid but i have ridden in raid area on the 1250 and really loved it okay so uh, you know i will i will keep on by reducing okay uh, kadir sheik i will get back to you uh uh preet we should move on to the next question as a uh, next uh, sheet as well so i will talk about the riding modes so in all of the you know current generation of motorcycles they come with uh, various uh, riding modes and uh, the the important thing for everyone is to understand is that these riding a uh, these riding modes are not just riding modes that you switch these are riding aids you are you you need to understand how how you can uh, you know you can maneuver the motorcycle in each situation with each setting like take for example if you are in off road mode 
and uh, uh, you know in in an uh, adventure rally or uh, you know open space uh, off road area and uh, you don't need to turn off uh, various settings if you are in these capable motorcycles you can switch into those uh, riding modes like an enduro pro or you know a touring mode in multistrada or in uh, you know uh, adventure mode in uh, ktm or in off road mode in uh, triumph so you move into in each setting and each setting has been you know worked by each uh, manufacturer so that they can give the maximum riding pleasure for uh, each terrain so explore those settings and remember each setting is dependent on also the tire i've seen a lot of guys using road tires and off road settings uh, you know like like enduro pro uh, enduro pro is made for uh, adventure tires with uh, uh, with uh, slightly knobby uh, characteristics so please remember these things are very important for uh, you to uh, understand and then only try to so go go back to your uh, instruction manual uh, and have a look understand which settings uh, are for which uh, segments and then ride with them great we move to next okay so um, i i hand over uh, from here to preet and the next questions uh, the set of questions we will take up afterwards yeah so uh, we have uh, you know me and shanawas our company kmi tours now we are thinking about doing a himalayan training program so what is going to be done is that we are going to be uh, conducting tours come training programs uh, which would be hand picked you know with technical routes like i have read so many questions in the chat box you have been talking about leh and ladakh circuits you have been talking about spiti circuits so we have created this uh, training program that we wanted to launch in 2020 uh, you know uh, mid mid 20, 2020 onwards but unfortunately due to the covid situation uh, we have to postpone it to maybe september if the situation get back to normal so these tra training programs will be uh, conducted by kmi tours and uh, it will be led by shanawas kari so we will be doing all these three circuits majority in majority basis which going to be operated from delhi so it's going to be first is the leh ladakh circuit which is going to be happening in mid of june till september end and the duration for these tours for leh ladakh circuit is going to be 10 days apart from that it's going to be spiti circuits there are going to be two type of spiti circuits one is going to be a winter spiti so you'll have a basic understanding about how to ride in difficult situations when there is a fresh snow so for that it's going to be done from december to january and the normal spiti tours is going to be conducted ju between july and september end apart from that we'll be taking on to some of the jungle trainings like uh, shanawas mentioned about uh, riding in ruts uh, riding in muddy situations in you know off road beaten trails now trails are very difficult to ride when you're talking about leh ladakh these are off road circuits but trails are a different thing so for trails rut riding and all those things we're going to be doing that in rajasthan and both basically in madhya pradesh so like in panch in uh, you know near to ratapani bhopal so we'll be doing those tours from november till february for 6 days so for those things you can you know we'll be keeping you updated uh, apart from that i'll just hand over back to shanawas if he wants to add something else from his own side yeah so um uh what what i wanted to add is that uh, the the objective for these trainings uh, and tours is uh, to make sure that you are equipped with the right way and uh, you know when you go back home you go back you take back memories rather than injuries uh, uh before before you guys log out i have i have very important two things uh, you know preet has something to say and uh, my colleague uh, uh, christoph zimmerman he is also online joined over here so uh, please uh, definitely have a look into their conversations yeah so that's it from uh, my side so, uh, uh, yeah uh, let's uh, go on to mr christoph now yep yeah. hello everybody 
Can you hear me? Hey, Christoph, how are you? How's everything in Spain? I am very good. Uh, can you actually hear me? Does it work? Yes, we can hear you. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yes, uh, beautiful, sunny, and we're waiting that uh, the crisis goes over, I guess, in Indian India. Perfect. So, Chris, uh, the presentation is now for you. So, you can just explain about your Enduro Park and about yourself. Ah, okay. Uh, well, then I just quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Christoph Zimmermann. I'm uh, one of the founders of the Enduro Park Andalusia. It's two of us. And uh, we are actually uh, the agency, the Enduro Park, the company that stands behind the Chia's Trophy in uh, New Zealand. This was happening this year in um, January, February. I don't know if everyone is aware of it, but the Chia's Trophy is basically from BMW, the most, uh, well, I would say the biggest adventure ride competition you find. And uh, well, in uh, this competition this year, there is was a, as well where Shana was, was taking part in our Marshalls team and he was, there is a Marshall uh, showing the teams the country and putting them through the exercises that we built for them. The exercises are partially um, really riding oriented, slow speed, but also on speed through sand, slaloms, and uh, as well technical and input like fixing tires or taking tires out of the bike and put it back into it. And as well, of course, um, know-how. So we had a quiz about 40 years of BMW GS and uh, that's basically what we did. We organized all this rally and afterwards we had a winner as well, obviously. And uh, that was our main project for this year. And all the rest of the year, we make trainings, tours, and uh, stuff like that in South Spain and Morocco and wherever the GS Trophy was before. So far to us. And the beautiful thing is Europe, Malaga, where we are based. Uh, there we have during the whole European winter time, uh, there we have actually the possibility to ride. So we open in October and close in May. So we go via the um, December time to really have uh, time to um, yeah, use our motorcycles when in other places in Europe is snow. So as well for Indian, I think it's very interesting to go to uh, Spain or from here when we launch our trips to Morocco. And for the guys who are more challenging or like the more challenging approach, we also have an off-road tour um, that we ride in Morocco on the tracks of the Dakar and Mer Sugarelli. And uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive, it's quite a fun. And before, thank you, of course, thank you very much to Chanel for the great presentation and uh, the riding tips that he put in. And yeah, what else to know? Chris, uh, can you also uh, talk about uh, the future of uh, training, especially you know uh, people who want to uh, get trained by uh, certified instructors and are based out of remote locations or uh, you know places where they can't access uh, the future of video trainings? If you can talk a bit about that as well. Yes, um, I would love to. Well, what we did right now and uh, how we started actually is a video rider team training and the video riding academy. This is basically a video based training possibility. This means you have the option, you have the chance to film yourself. Then you go on videoridingacademy.com and uh, then you send us your video of an exercise. For example, like a few of you guys wrote actually, they have problems in uphill, in downhill. It's good to write about it, it's good to talk about it, but at the end, we as instructors, as trainers, we need to see it. We need to see the position, we need to see what's happening there, and then we can give you details. And in the Video Writing Academy, we built the product that you send us this video and then we analyze it. We analyze it, we have specific tools, specific software for it and really highlight then your body position, mark where you should move basically your body to the front. So we highlight and we also 
uh, make a recording, an audio recording, so that you hear about what the comments we have to make in the situation so we can fix it like a proper training session just in a video, just online. I do this also in our individual trainings when people come to want to be trained by me personally. So it means that we stand together, I go through the whole process and then I film the participant. And afterwards we look at it together. And the point is when you see yourself on camera, you always realize actually most of the time already yourself what you do wrong but then after highlighting it in the video then you understand really good in a profound base how to change the body position how to be more active on the motorcycle and to combine it and right now because we have uh, with the corona crisis we have still the lockdown we said well the best idea is actually to um do it by video because everyone has somehow a parking lot or somehow some space where he can ride and why not do some slow speed training and once you get at a point where you say oh i don't know how to improve myself in this uh, situation film it send it to us get your feedback anything else Charles? Oh, so uh, just wanted to add to Christoph is that uh, all of the, you know, the trainers over here are, uh, you know, certified and uh, pretty experienced trainers over here. And uh, yeah, just, just, just the future because, uh, you know, even after doing a training, people go back and then they, you know, forget what they have done. It, it, the video thing works a lot better. What do you say, Christoph? Um, yeah, before, before we go to your question, actually, I would love to answer the question of Rishi because I think it's a very nice one. He asks why everyone prefers a GS. And um, <laughs> uh, Rishi, there are actually, for me, there are two main reasons why uh, at least I prefer a GS. The first thing is I'm not a very tall person either. And what I love about the 1250 is the boxer engine. The boxer engine is in the low refs, so quiet, so calm. It doesn't stall. You know, it's a little bit, it's now an unactive example. It's a little bit like a tractor, but it always runs smoothly. It doesn't matter what challenge you got, it always runs smoothly through the challenge. And a small person, a small rider, the best thing is when you drop the motorcycle because it's too challenging. You have the advantage again of the boxer, uh, the boxer engine that you have actually this nice angle in which the motorcycle lands and afterwards is so easy to lift it. You know, it's just perfect. It's, if you're not two meters and if you're not strong like a bull, out of a 45 degree angle, nearly everybody can lift the motorcycle. So that's why I think those two uh, decisions end at the end because the power have all the adventure bikes in this case. But this, this beautiful, calm engine, this ref, this low ref, powerful engine, this is a GS. And this one, this is why we basically prefer or I prefer the GS. It's just such a, such a great bike. And it's fun like hell, you can ride fast and super slow. Sorry for doing advertisement for BMW, but it's just my preferred motorcycle in the big bikes. <laughs> Sorry, Chanel. Uh, in fact, in fact uh, another motorcycle which is closer to it uh, now is the 790 Adventure R, yeah. which I felt similar because of the new uh, uh, the, the fuel tank position. Yes, that's nice because it's also very low, so the weight is lower, the weight distribution is low on the motorcycle that makes it very nice as well. I agree to this one. Yeah. So, so anyone who wants to, uh, you know, uh, get their video riding, uh, uh, you know, sessions done, you can, you can reach out to the website, get your video. Uh, we'll, we'll, Christoph, me, uh, Manuel Tashner, and uh, uh, there's uh, one you know, a veteran trainer as well with us and who can, you know, get back with uh, specific inputs on the motorcycle. Yes. And uh, anyways, if you ever get the chance and if you uh, 
if you just want to try it, just send us a message. You know, if you have questions about it, if yes. you're not 100% sure, I just write down the Instagram channel as well. Then if you want to start with it, but you're not 100% sure how to start it, then you just send us a message at the Video Writing Academy in Instagram. And obviously you always can get in touch via Enduro Park Andalusia. That's also me who will uh, reply to you. Um, in Instagram, if you have any questions regarding uh, the Video Writing Academy about how to do it, how to use uh, the current situation to get better in writing, because Shana has talked about the future as well. But I hope that the future of motorcycling, especially of adventure riding, is soon to come so that we have the chance to go and ride out there again. And especially then in this moment, we want to be prepared. So right now you can actually uh, use the time at home to work on the basics. Because I saw a scene for the, for the cross country rallies, for the race that uh, on the slide, somebody wrote, uh, explain more about preparation. And uh, I think exactly this is now the great time to prepare for it, to use the time to be at home, to work on the slow speed, on the, yeah, on the basics, on the foundation of motorcycling before you go out into the uh, well, desert, into the adventure tracks, wheresoever, that you're also feeling just 100% safe on your bike. Good. Thomas? Cool. Okay, so um, I have uh, one more slide with me, which I would uh, like to talk about in between. If you guys have any questions, please put together. This is the next thing that I, I thought uh, makes sense because uh, this is not just any you know brand which is uh, coming out. It is uh, from a rider myself uh, and uh, just to give you a story that whenever I used to ride there were uh, a lot of uh, instances where I dropped my helmet or uh, dropped my gloves forgot it somewhere so what I did is that uh, I, I uh, figured out a way how to you know keep my helmet safe by converting the jacket into uh, my jacket into a backpack and which is why this uh, I, I launched this brand called Ulka Gear and this jacket is called Hack It. And uh, the objective is that when you are riding, you're wearing it like a protective riding jacket. And uh, once you are off, you put your helmet, gloves, goggles, everything inside, wear it like a backpack and roam freely without your, you know, uh, without uh, dropping your coffee from your hand. So ulkagear.com uh, or... Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, the Instagram handle is U L K A G A A R everywhere on all the platform Ulka Gear. So feel free to visit and uh, see. So that's it from my side. Anything else, Christoph? You would like to add? Preet? Oh, thank you very much. It's very nice listening to you guys. And I guess Camry Tours will be starting as well, hopefully soon again. Yes, and yes for sure. This will be fantastic once we can go out there riding again all over the world. I am looking forward to come to India again and have a ride with you guys. Absolutely. Same here. We are, we are very hopeful for 2021 uh, for many, many tours and uh, training sessions to be conducted at Enduro Park along with Shan of us. So we are hopeful that next year we are going to get many batches from India uh, for Enduro Park Andalusia. Yes. Um, just very quickly, Rishi had an, uh, sent another question about the Tiger 900 uh, because he asked if we have written it uh, already. And uh, yes, Rishi, actually I did work with uh, Triumph before. I uh, even, um, well, we did some, we did even help with the product launch and we, of, in 2012, of the Tiger Explorer in those days. And we did the first tour through Morocco with the crowd from Triumph itself, like uh, on, on the zero serious bikes for the testing. And from then on, I always was connected with Triumph, obviously. And the 900 I rode as well. It's a fantastic motorcycle. I really love it as well. The three cylinders, great, fantastic power output. And uh, again, 
everything I said before, still a bit yes for me. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hey, thank you, guys. Perfect. Uh, All right, uh, guys. So, uh, if you have any more questions, please do let us know right now. If you have any more questions, then uh, you know. Otherwise, we are going to uh, we are coming at the end of the session. And I'm just going to open the mic for everyone. If you want to say yeah, something, guys, your mics are open. So if you can say something, uh, thank you, Shanawar. Thank you, Christoph, uh, for an amazing insight. Thank you, Preet. Please get the work done in an amazing way. Okay. Yeah, I had a fantastic time. Thank you so much. Welcome, Mushi. Thank you, Preet. Bye. Okay. Welcome, guys. Thanks, Shavanaar. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Even if you have any more questions later on, uh, you have Shahnawaz's Instagram handle over here. You can contact him. You have Christoph's Instagram handle. You can contact both of these guys. Uh, if you have any queries regarding you know, any technique, you know, you just want to know. Then you can get in touch. All right. All right, guys. So I'm going to end the session over here. Thanks, Sharmas. Thanks, guys. And if there are any questions, you can reach out to any one of us anytime. We're looking for the next web seminar.